be honest, I was a little shocked when I saw this uh, this story uh, on uh, Crime Think and uh, what was the second? Common Dreams is where I saw the story. Uh, and you can get uh, a lot of these stories are also available on radindymedia.com as well uh, because uh, they are a fantastic site where you can get a, a lot of uh, lefty sources that are, are going to be suppressed on YouTube and on Google and things like that. So there you can find them all in one one place, and that place is radindymedia.com, just in a good place for getting stories like this. Um, yeah, I get I get a bunch of my stories from them, from radindymedia.com. So uh, this story was about Minneapolis uh, voting down, voting down uh, the bill to defund the police. And, and it wasn't particularly a full-on defund the police bill eh, eh, per se, uh, uh, which I always feel very pretentious when I say per se. Uh, you know, I feel like I should push my. Oh, it wasn't uh, defund the police uh, bill uh, per se. Like I feel like I should have like a Chardonnay in my hand or some shit. Uh, when I say that, but the bill itself uh, did have some uh budgetary proclamations. That's not the right word. Uh, but that's the word that came to my head. Uh, there's portions of the bill that talk about the police budget, and the police budget would be reduced, right? Because that's also the point of it is that Minneapolis is an over-policed city. And um, so the the new amendment, uh, part of the thing that it would do is transfer police power from the mayor to the city council, right? Because in a lot of these cities, in most of these cities, the, the police are just kind of there as the mayor's guards, that's it. That's really it. That's what they're there for. They're just protecting the mayor. They're just the the mayor's fucking hired guns. Uh, and, uh, and, and we've seen this all throughout history, right? When the Boston police strike happened, they just deputized college students. Same thing happened in Seattle during the, during that general strike, the mayor deputized a bunch of people that were like, that he was basically their job to protect the mayor. That's it. That's all they were fucking there to do. So, if it's with city council, that means that a larger number of people have to make a decision um, on what the police can and can't do. So you're you're going to get a little bit more of a consensus rather than just one person saying what it can and can't do. Uh, what was the other one, and then it was and then it was reducing the amount of cops um, that would be a part of the Minneapolis police department. Right. So, so it goes down to the minimum police based on population. And, uh, and, and, and we need that because there's a constant, constant cycle, um, of recruitment for cops going on. I mean, nonstop. Every, every time I was on the road, right. Right. And when I would listen to music, I, I had Spotify back then and I didn't, I didn't have the money to pay for Spotify uh, when I was a touring comedian. And uh, and so I would listen to the ads. And every, I mean, every time I was on the road, at least one of these cities would have a recruitment ad where they were specifically looking for veterans. They were lo specifically looking for veterans to join the police force. So they're just recruiting people. So that was part of, th those were some of the major parts of that bill. So those are some of the major parts of that bill. 44% of the people voted yes. So, you know, the the anti, basically the liberals, basically anybody that watches corporate media um, can't say that this was a shutout because it wasn't a fucking shutout. 44% is a large number of people. That's that's almost a dead, like you're getting close to a fucking deadlock, right? Um Communities that were more diverse voted yes uh, in that 44%. Communities that, that that were more diverse voted yes because communities that are more diverse, that have a more minority population, are the ones that are getting accosted by the cops the most. That's what happens. Uh, that is a reality. You can choose to accept or not accept, but if you choose to not accept it, you're just living in a fantasy world. You're living in a fantasy world where it's acceptable uh, for a murderer who happens to be white uh, to cry because someone touched his gun. That's the fantasy world you get to live in, and you can choose to live in that world, but just know uh, that you're fucking wrong. Okay, uh, moving on. Most young people voted yes. 
Um, and uh, where we really see the trouble in, in both white, black and brown communities is the elderly people, right? The, o- the older voters, and regardless of color or anything like that, voted against the amendment, voted against the amendment to defund the police and, and essentially take the mayor's power away um, from utilizing the police the, the, the way they choose to see fit which in this case would, would be essentially to attack uh, black and brown communities and protesters, which is, which is what cops do. That's, that's primarily what cops do. Cops, cops protect infrastructure, right? They protect buildings. They protect pipelines. They protect fucking cell towers. They don't protect the people because if they protected the people, we wouldn't hear so many fucking stories about black people and brown people, indigenous people, white people, whoever getting fucking murdered by the cops. And, oh, we wouldn't see fucking tear gas and rubber bullets being fired point blank at protesters because those would be the people that they have to fucking protect. Usually, when it comes to older people, you know, the the generalization is that they have a harder time with transformational change. Very few old people, when I talk to them about defunding the police or anything like that, are okay with that idea. They go, oh, well, you know, I think the co- they need more training, but that's going to cost more money. And it's like, no, 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 they have the money for all that shit. They're just using it to buy weapons. Nah, well, that's not what they would do. You know, it's 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 a lot of mental gymnastics to to justify not defunding the police to the level that I think we we need to. And the other side of it as to why these elderly folks would vote against the, you know and, and this is coming after waves and waves of uh Black Lives Matter protests, waves and waves of uh, you know, defund the police protests, it, it just protests against police brutality itself, which, you know, to, to basically be like, hey, us cops are not brutalizing the community, ram them with the car, R- show them that we're not brutal by ramming them with a with a 10 ton vehicle, do it, do it, that'll show them. We are peaceful people, shoot them in the face with the rubber, shoot them in the in the face, try to get the rubber bullet inside somebody's skull. Just a, not a lot, just a little bit. Be compassionate. Don't be a sicko, Jerry. You son of a bitch. But that's, that's what it, that's, uh, that's how the cops were like, we're not brutal. Brutalize the fuck out of these people and show them that we're not brutal. Like That's, what we say, and even after that, there are people that are kind of older that were like, eh, "What if we sat them down and said no? I think that'll do it. I think that'll do it. With just a real t- a no, and that's it. Works on my dog every time, right? Like that's kind of the like what." What are you talking about? The whole system needs to be gutted from the inside out. We need to completely transform what policing in this country actually looks like. But that's what that's what the argument uh, from the opposite side is, right? That and that's and that's how these uh, people get propagandized. And Fox News is an obvious. That's a, duh. Fucking Fox News is going to come out and they call Black Lives Matter Marxist. Oh no! Like fucking freaking out over socialism and one bearded dude from the 1800s who had some very pointy things to say. Uh, but they were like, oh, this guy, he's still killing society and he's coming for your freedom and he's and he's going to go through the butt. That's what he's going to do. That's the Fox News just freaks out about that shit all the fucking time. But CNN was doing it. MSNBC was doing it, right? Uh, you know, CNN put out an article over the summer that I that I covered, where they basically said, "Well, all these cities that have had that have had these Black Lives Matter protests, these to fund the police protests, um, you know, they they are seeing a, a, a an increase in in the crime wave because there's just not enough cops. All these cops have to be allocated to deal with this protest, and all these protests are riots, right? So they so they kind of falsely equated the increase in crime rates." to police officers needing to be at a, which like they don't need to be at this protest. Most of these people are peacefully protesting and guess what? They don't fucking want you around. That's the point of the protest, man. <laughs> the point of the protest is that you guys are around a little too much. And when you guys are around, you guys get a little, you know, murdery, let's call it just a little homicidal ish. If you will. So maybe don't fucking show up. 
with your guns and your armor. Why do you need an armor when there's a kid with a water bottle and some signs? Isn't that isn't this what you're trained to do? Like that's what all of your training says. You're because the training is the, the police training is basically that everybody is your enemy. The the general public is your enemy. That's how they fucking treat it. There were very few cities that actually went through defunding the police, right? Uh, especially in 2020 uh, and 2021, which is this year. And at that point, when the CNN article had come out, there were very few cities that had gone through the defunding the police, like approved defunding the police and reallocating the budget to social services and so on and so forth. None of those cities got actually saw an increase in violent crimes. Austin didn't. Like, you would think that these people coming up be like, oh, man, people are going to be setting shit on fire if you defund the police. Okay, there's going to be at least one guy. I know I know at least two guys that would do this, that they would stand in every street corner and just masturbate. Is that what you want? You want things on fire and our sidewalks covered in spunk. Is that what you want? That's what you want? Then go ahead, defund the police. Defund the police all day. Do it all day. None of that shit has fucking happened in these cities that have actually done it. Police presence tends to be the spark of violence. That's where the violence starts, through police presence. When the cops show up to any of these protests, they're the ones that engage. Historically speaking, that's how it's worked. Most strikes are completely peaceful. And then, you know, the fucking hired guns, the, the Pinkertons show up, the cops show up, and then boom. Somebody's getting beaten in the head. We're, we're, bombs are flying all over the place. People getting shot. It's mass chaos, pandemonium everywhere. <laughs> you know? What we need is community policing. I, you know, people on the left, including myself, have been saying this for over a goddamn year now. Community policing, that's what we need. Right? Uh, Community-based policing with less combat training. And no one is saying that these people shouldn't be trained to defend themselves. Uh, but they're not trained to defend themselves. They are trained to kill people. They need less combat training and more de-escalation training. More training on how to talk to, I don't know, like a fucking human. You know how it was like some people just don't know how to talk to like people? Uh, and and like instead of it, when somebody goes like, hey, how's it going? How are you? It's good to it's good to see you. Uh, and instead of like saying what normal people would would say back, which, which would be like, oh, it's good to see you, too. How are you? How are the kids? Uh, they like shoot you in the face. Co cops need to be trained not to shoot people in the face. Uh, and community based policing would do that. Not only that, but half the people that are in the, you know, that p police these neighborhoods. Um, and I'm, I'm lucky to live in a community where where the cops are from here. Right. Um but I also don't have to interact with the cops very often. Uh, somebody once asked me how many times I see police. I'd say a, f a few times a week. And then they told me that in Germany, they see them like once or twice a month. That's how often they see cops in their communities, in their neighborhoods. Just once or twice a month. That's all it takes. Uh, I still, even though I live in a pretty good community, and, uh, you know, I don't see a lot of cops anymore. And the cops do live in the neighborhood that they police. Um, I would still say I see the cops a few times a week, a few times a week. Um, but that's the other part, too, is most of these cops don't live in the neighborhoods that they police. They live out in the burbs. They come into these you know, low income neighborhoods, neighborhoods that aren't theirs. They don't know the dynamics of how things work. They don't know who's coming and going. They don't, you know, they're, they just don't because they're not neighbors. And, and they also don't have to give a shit about that community because they don't fucking live there. So they have no invest. They have nothing invested, nothing at stake there. Community based policing would get rid of that problem. The cops would live in the place that they actually protect and actually work. They would know the ins and outs 
right? They would know that I I frequently would take walks randomly or if I was a touring comic. Yeah, there's going to be some times that, oh, it's Chris. He, he sometimes shows up at 2.30 in the morning because he just drove back from Toledo. No worries. No big deal. You know, like they would know that kind of stuff. They would know that, oh, this is, yeah, Mrs. Wallowitz has a little bit of a problem. Sometimes she gets out into the streets and kind of yells at the neighbors and you just got to kind of, you know, I remember um, this was maybe two, three or four years ago now, but I used to live in, in Garfield, which is a neighborhood in Pittsburgh. And, uh, and my, a, a friend of mine was coming over. I, I, w I was in town and, and a friend of mine was touring through, they had a night off and they had a, you know, a, a long drive that they were going to split up into two. And, you know, I was like, come stay, uh, stay with us, you know, we'll, we'll put you up in our futon and we'll hang out and get some dinner and all that sort of stuff. And as they were coming, I said, don't get on my street. Um, uh, I'll let you know when it's like, okay to get here. And he was like, what's going on? And I was like, well, there's cops outside my house, uh, with guns drawn at one of our neighbors. Uh, and, and, and our neighbor was, you know, a, a little bit further down the road and, and he was, uh, an elderly black man. And, uh, the, they, the cops got called by somebody. I'm not really sure who, uh, but he was having a bit of an episode. Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think he was schizophrenic and was just having an episode and the family had it taken care of, but the situation got a little loud. And so the cops got called, uh, and they had guns drawn at this elderly fucking black man that was having an episode and just needed to be talked down from what was happening to him, which I'm not going to pretend to understand because I don't have schizophrenia. I've never experienced anybody with schizophrenia, but we, they locked down the whole street. Five cop cars showed up, guns drawn. I mean, that's just exacerbating the situation. That's going to make things worse. Do you really feel like someone having a schizophrenic episode needs to have a gun, several guns pointed in their face? If it was community-based policing, they would know, hey, this guy's schizophrenia. We probably shouldn't have the guns. Let's try to get them inside. Let's let's try not to disturb the neighbors. Let's just get them inside the house. Take care of them a little bit. That's what they need to be trained on. And and there needs to be more accountability when it comes to police murders, period. So I think part of the problem is countering this propaganda where elderly voters are now going to vote against the benefit of, of society, right? Uh, and, and they're and they're being told that they are voting for the benefit of society. But that's going to come down to the 44% of the, you know, the 44% the that voted yes and people from that camp. Because we're going to need to see more people getting educated and combating propaganda. Because like I said, the media kind of picks up on these stories and they become too big to ignore and they have to fucking talk about it. So, you know, to fund the police, Black Lives Matter, you know, restructuring of the police system in and of itself has been a topic of conversation for a very long time. I mean, I probably started talking about it in like 2013, 2014. And at that point, it was such a fringe topic that I became like a fringe person, even within my, even within my weirdo fucking fringy community to call for, hey, maybe we need to reallocate some of these funds. Maybe we need to reduce the number of – like saying that sort of shit uh, was a very fringe ideology, right? So I think for us, now that kind of people are on board with this idea because they see what we've been talking about for the last decade or two – um, it's it's time they get educated because when when these ideas get introduced, everybody believes them to be extreme because it's so antithetical to how society actually operates, right? I mean, and it is it is completely antithetical to the way that society operates. So because it is that, they're going to be resistant to the idea. They might agree with it in concept, but executing it is going to be a completely different thing because they're not ready for the consequences of that kind of change. Unless we educate them, right? Uh, you know, reminding them that policing comes from, a, a, from slave patrols where black people were thought as property and that ideology has never faded away. 
And we have proof that that ideology has never faded away. And they're likely going to agree with that. Then we can talk about the execution of things. What's going to happen? How are we going to deal with the violent crime? Well, detectives are still going to be there. And we're not going to get rid of violence, violent impulses just by saying we're changing the way that policing works. It's a start to it, for sure. Violent, sometimes violent outbursts come when people think that they're going to get in trouble and they feel desperate. So, again, the other part of that now is that the criminal justice system is now going to get changed. Laws and the way that laws and punishments are dealt out are, are going to have to change. If we're going to take a community approach to law enforcement, then we're going to have to take a community approach to law and punishment and prisons and so on and so forth as well. So that outward kind of trans transformation is scary to these folks. But if we educate them and say there are benefits to this, and it's hard, and it's time-consuming, and it can be frustrating at times because, because you're, you have to constantly keep battling propaganda. But if it's more than just you know a few of us, if there's a lot more people kind of getting in on this conversation, then – Change is gonna change is gonna come a lot faster. You're you're gonna get a lot more people that are gonna be able to accept that kind of transformational change. Really, what it should be about the 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 primary goal of of this of this education, and and that's sort of the way that I'm what the direction I want to take this channel is is this political education side of it. Really, the 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 major thing we should be talking about is quelling fear, because let's be honest. We're human beings are scared creatures. We we think from our amygdalas more than which is why we have police brutality, because we think from the lizard brain than we do than the rest of this fucking thing, right? We have an entire emotional spectrum to choose from, and we only go with fear and anger. That's that's a, a lot of the fucking decisions that we made is through fear and anger. Um you know, I'm, and I'm sure some of you guys might have heard my stand-up bit that I'm actually reworking and rewriting. Uh, about the amygdala and stuff. But we can make a choice, and I think it's going to come from the younger generation. Uh, it's going to come from the, the lefty people that have this knowledge. And instead of kind of hoarding that knowledge, we share that amongst people as much as possible, um, which is why, you know, Which is why I kind of think that when lefties argue <laughs> over like stupid shit, uh, it's kind of pointless. So, um, yeah, educate people and quelling fear. That's what it should be about. Try to have those conversations because what they don't want is what they don't want is people reading beyond CNN. They want CNN to be the be all be all end all of of where they get their news and CNN and MSNBC and NPR, all of them don't want you to defund the police, the Democrats and Republicans, neither party wants you to defund the police. Neither party wants to see any sort of transformational change. Um, and Aiden brings up a good point here, right? Fear and anger. That's the whole GOP platform. Yeah, it is. Uh, and, and arguably it's also the Democrats platform <laughs> is fear and anger, right? We're, we're just going to make people scared and make them angry at the Republicans. Uh, uh, so yeah. 